just have to pop out and get some more bits to fit this AIS aerial. I think I'm going to have to jerry rig it for now and see how we get on. It's been a long, hard season. I'm feeling weary to my bones. I guess that's my reason. I packed my bags and now I'm gone. Somewhere between the sun and the deep blue sea. We're going to install the AIT fifteen hundred. Class B AIS transponder. Now, this being a transponder sends and receives AIS signals on VHF frequencies. So essentially the plan is relatively straightforward. What we're going to do is we will start off by installing it into the section of uh, the, the inside just above the nav station um, on this Bavaria and then Following that, we will route a cable out to the stern of the boat, uh, rig up a, what may not be temporary, but it probably hopefully will only be temporary, uh, um, uh, one inch stainless steel tube mast, which I've got some grommets and bits and pieces for to make it look pretty. Um, strap on the AIS aerial on the transom, uh, effectively on the push pit. Um, and about that's about it really. It's a very straightforward job. Oh, um, uh, and I'll explain a bit more about how the, the um, NEMA 2K works and you know, yada, yada, yada. A digital yacht who make this product say, as long as you've got glass fibre between the transponder and the sky, it'll be fine. So it's going to be in here nice and warm next to the radar here. It's worth pointing out the power for this unit comes off the cabling for the NMEA 2000 network. So there's no need for an external power anywhere within this which is quite useful because it makes it a very easy fit. This plug here is for the VHF antenna and that's what we're going to be routing out to a pole on the push pit of the boat. In the diagram here you can see how all this fits together. There's an AIS antenna which sends and receives data on the specific VHF frequency. The transponder itself has an internal GPS which allows it to know where it is in the world. The transponder sends data along the NMEA 2K network and the devices that are attached to that network can take the data and you can see that there is a position being shown on the chart plotter for two vessels. I'm going to use some offcuts of one inch stainless steel tube plus these rather excellent aluminium NOAA fittings. Um, as you can see that takes One's going to go on the push pit rail, one's going to go on the tube, that's perfect. Um, it's a very, very simple fitting here. Uh, I'm going to try it first with some stainless steel metal uh, tie wraps with the special tool that you need for that. I'll uh, give that a go. So we're going to go outside, essentially cut up some bits of metal, attach it to the transom, see what happens and go from there. I think it'll work, we'll see. going to make up the Nobo fittings which are fairly straightforward. It's um, simply a nut and a bolt in there. Take them both apart. I think you might be able to hear the wind hasn't given up. So the Nobo fittings come together in two parts like this and they clamp around here, like so. Very, very, very easy to fit.
that's all nicely tightened up properly now. That genuinely isn't going anywhere. I don't need to think too much about. I could put a triangular piece here, but genuinely I don't think that's going to be a problem. So there we go. The idea is, is that we're going to place the AIS antenna to the aft of this post here. The temporary one that we're probably going to replace with a radar arch at some stage. So I'm going to use some steel cable ties just to temporarily put this on. I just want to see what it goes like. Take the cable down through a deck land and then straight forward. And then we'll see where we'll go from there and see what happens. Right, so in a slight change of plan, I've decided to go with a bit of self amalgamating tape um, to act as a almost a friction, uh, allow a little bit of friction. Um, that should be plenty now to allow me to use just nylon tie straps. As I say, this is a very temporary procedure and that just allows me to have a little bit of friction. And I'm imagining that you can probably hear the wind is increasing now. It's all getting very exciting out here now. There we go. Right. So that's that. Yeah, that is that's quite nice. Get another one of those in. And then we can start plumbing the rest of it. Don't allow the water to drain into your electrical equipment. So rather than having it, um, I mean, it is protected. It's got to go upwards anyway. But from just from purposes, I would much prefer to have a little loop here so that it has to go up and down and it doesn't mess about. And the key here, as everything else, is just trying to make it look pretty. Because, I mean, why wouldn't you? The deck seal that I'm using, this one here, comes in a variety of sizes and this had little they give you some little bungs to go through the middle which represent the cable size that's the size of bung that I'm going to use and our cable will fit through it now it's got a split in it here and that allows us to be able to not have to take the plug off which is very very useful so I've got this one out that's uh this one's going to have to have some more radical action, I think. And I think this was seized in solid, so big set of pipe wrenches. Oh, gorilla it off. So, trying to make it a relatively neat job, this, because um, it's just only needs to be as big as that. But I don't want to take that off, and I'm, and I'm perfectly confident that it'll be waterproof. This will fit quite nicely now, as you can see. It goes through there. So that's good. So that means that we don't have to take this BNC connector off, which is, quite frankly, um, a pain in the ass if I got to do that. So happy that it goes straight through there. Good. OK, there, uh, like that. Very quickly, I'm going to put this through here and take it all the way through. Then it's going in there. Let's get all that through to wind all that through. So all of that through there. I'm now sat in the lazarette, or well, that's what I call it. It's a dirty great big locker in this Bavaria because we've got two cabins on this one. So we have 
a forward cabin we have an aft cabin and the other side is a shower in front of this bulkhead here is the shower uh, this is the gopher pump for it and I intend to fit our waste tank here for our pump out and then all of my wires from the AIT installation are coming out from here and I'm just about to tidy those up and make it all neat um, but this this locker is big enough to actually sit in um, you'll have yeah, those of you those of you that have been watching Salty Lass will have will know this because they spent quite a lot of time in there which is quite amusing so there's a lot of locker in here um, this is the Robasto I fitted myself it's an Airtop Evo 40 says there uh, which I fitted myself and I put this um, custom box in with uh, vents here um, to keep it protected which has done a marvellous job and the vents basically go out the back of the boat and then all the way up through the middle and we have a backbone of a heating uh, a heating sort of backbone pipe that I can then come off if I need to and I've got vents in every cabin the air intake is from these pipes up here so this locker is fed externally and it's not recycling the air in the cabins so this is another distribution box that i've put in this one feeds the back end of the n2k network there that's the power feed for it and that goes off down the floor here and joins the backbone i think the backbone is here it's one of these cables here i think it's probably this one here uh, that that's the backbone that goes down to the front of the boat uh, these feed the chart plotter and the instruments that are on the instrument pod um, as noted here so you've got pod network plotter uh, that's what these are um, and we've got a few odds and sods that we the, the two spare ones which we're going to use and then this box here is the power for the uh, autopilot that's got some very heavy gauge cables coming in here so what we'll do is we'll take the power for the new autopilot which is in an upcoming episode and we'll use that to feed that to save having to put new wires in so that's the plan anyway the only issue I think we've got is we might have to extend the N2K backbone across the other side of the boat, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But these distribution points, I love them, they're brilliant. You get, a, you get this uh, common earth, it's well, common negative, I should say, that you can plop onto. Um, and, you know, three, six distribution points all fused individually. And, and I think that's a really good thing. So that, that's really good, happy with that, very, very happy with that. So that's where we're coming up inside. Um, cables through there. I'm going to run these cables down along here, down here, through there, all the way by the side of the heads, and then finally wind up at the chart table. Should now just start to pull, and in theory, there we go. Look, that's what we're after. Now I can just pull the rest through. Got the AIT wired in now. This goes to the uh, NEMA 2K network. This is a USB one we don't need because it's already set up. And this one goes to the uh, AIS antenna on the back. So when I fire this up, this should now start to send and receive as we would expect, which is good. And then I've just got to tidy up all of these cables and crap that I've got in here and I've got to do something with that mess in there so I'm just going to fit up these wires now try and make some sense of it and I intend to put in a nice I'm going to try and put in, oops, I'm going to try and put in a nice steady curl, make it look neat. So something like this, nice big open, don't want to stress the wires any, so a nice big open uh, loop like that. In fact, probably might go a bit bigger and then I'm going to push it inside there so it's not stressed, there's no problems because the last thing you want is tight curls on wires, nice big loops, that's the way to go. Majority of wires are in this hole here. Uh, coming up here, going along there and back down there. So that's all 
that's kind of all the that's the path now it's not tidy-ish i want to put some trunking in but that'll do for now it's what best can be described as a a multi-way plug for the backbone and what you do is this is the end of the of the n2k backbone so it's got a resistor on the end here the other long thick one there this one here goes off to the the back of the boat uh, this one here is for the n2k converter which feeds the little chart plotter that we've got on the nav station this is the one from the ais so very neat, very easy, and the power for the AIS comes out of this. So this is really cool. Um, so I'm gonna screw that into place somewhere down there, but it's really secure there anyway. This is behind a, a cabinet that no one looks at. So now we'll be able to see it powered up. That's the AIT 1500 installed, where it's going to stay now. And it's there with happily with the green light on so that is now operational and all we need to do is hook it up to the rest of the systems job done so a quick power up test um, now bear in mind obviously that uh, I have no chart card in here so it's very difficult to show you any charts but essentially what we should have is if I click on now have the uh, Axiom plotters now turned on. It's got its GPS fix, it's happy. It's picking up the AIS signals around us, which is not neat. Remember we have the aerial here now. So this data is coming from the AIT 1500, which is absolutely excellent. And uh, we're transmitting as well. Uh, we're on marine traffic, so I've checked that, that's good. So we are showing all of the AIS targets around us and this would be the guys in Port Solent. This little blob here is where we are and these are the guys in the marina. So that, that conclusively works, so I'm happy with that. Roger that, flight deck, this is Eagle, Papa 2, out.